Hello and welcome to this virtual session. I'm delighted that out of all of the wonderful discussions that are a part of this year's He for She Summit that you are here with me today. My name is Taylor Nicole Rogers and I am a correspondent at the Financial Times where I report on the US labor market. But today we're having a conversation that is very near and dear to my heart and that is on how to engage the leaders of tomorrow. I'm delighted to welcome the president of Stony Brook University, Dr. Mari McGinnis. David Velasquez also joins us. He's the president and CEO of Pepco Holdings and the secretary general of the World Organization of the Scout Movement completes my panel today. A big welcome to Ahmed Alindawi. So Mari, you've had a very successful career in academia. You're used to engaging with young leaders and you know, driven students who have a lot of ideas and a lot of passion for what they want the world to look like in the future. So, I mean, how would you say you've gone about engaging with them over the past five to 10 years? So we've created a number of programs and I'm gonna tell you about one and that is our WISE program. And WISE stands for Women in Science and Engineering. And it is a program that builds a roadmap, roadmap for girls and women to pursue STEM degrees and those opportunities. So we have really two parts to this program. The first is what happens at our university where our WISE program supplies mentoring, social support, a tailored curriculum for our women scientists. But of course, giving women opportunities in these fields has to start long before they, re they reach our university. So we also have a high school WISE program that pairs high school students with Stony Brook graduate students and faculty mentors who can help them focus on particular projects to provide them hands-on experience in the field. I could not agree more. Thank you so much for that. And when students leave a university like Stony Brook, they're going to end up in the professional world. Um, so David, I'm wondering about Pepco. You employ more than 4,700 people, I'm assuming across several generations. So how do you work to engage people on the younger end of your workforce? First of all, as part of Exelon's He for She commitments, we developed summer STEM leadership academies in Illinois and Pennsylvania and the Washington DC regions. And the purpose was to encourage high school girls to pursue a career in STEM field and also help them understand they can be leaders in addressing climate change. To give you another example, we also um, have been partnering with local organizations. So one example of that is at Atlantic City Electric, which is our energy utility serving Southern New Jersey. We recently partnered with the Drum Thwacket Foundation and Sustainable Jersey to create the New Jersey Student Climate Challenge. Um, if you don't know, New Jersey has an initiative to increase climate literacy, literacy among young people across the state, including a first in the nation effort to incorporate climate change education across all K-12 state academic standards. So this new contest encourages students to understand and address the local effects of climate change and develop solutions right in their own local community to help provide solutions to that. Thank you for sharing that. Um, and as you mentioned, leadership skills are essential for everyone, especially up and coming leaders. So Ahmed, I'm wondering, how has the Scout movement changed its approach to preparing young people to take on leadership roles? We have taken our work to countries where we didn't have a scouting for girls before. I'm extremely proud to announce that scouting today is actually available in Saudi Arabia. And we are actually seeing more enrolled for girls in Saudi uh, compared to our program for boys. So that is accelerating really fast. I'm very proud that the very sought after Eagle Scout, the highest ranking in the scouting in the United States, is now open for girls. And we just last month celebrated the first cohort of girls who have uh, really enjoyed that program and showed that they are able to accomplish a lot through scouting. We are seeing also that the, the confirmation coming by when these programs are extended equally to young women and girls as for boys, we are seeing remarkable results. And just one, one thing that's making us incredibly proud in scouting, that in fact, the first ever Time Magazine Kid of the Year is a scout herself, 15 years old, and to Mari comments around the STEM education, 
when you offer that kind of education at an early age, you will see miracles happening with young people. Absolutely. And as we move into the latter half of our conversation, I'd like to pivot from the work that we're, we are already doing and focus on some of the work that we would like to see in the decade ahead. So I'm wondering if we were to focus on the essential and urgent actions that need to be done to help engage our, the leaders of tomorrow, I'm wondering, Ahmed, where would your priorities be? Obviously education. I mean, uh, it's really start with education. It's hard to imagine a way forward for anyone to be a, a, an active member of this changing world without being equipped with the tools to engage with the, with the world, with, the, with your uh, active citizenship or exercise of your rights or access to these rights, or even engaging in finding a job. I also believe that we, while we are championing things externally, we shouldn't forget our own houses and, and organizations. And we need to lead by example. It's really easy to go and make all the right speeches, but I also turn back and I know that we still have the homework to be done in our own organization. There's still more to be done in ensuring that girls, they don't feel like they are guests to the program, but they own it as much as boys. Absolutely. And David, while I have you, I'm wondering, what do other companies need to do to future-proof themselves and make sure that they do have that, ne that next generation that's ready to step up to the plate? I think all of us collectively as corporations, you know, have begun to take on the challenge, I'll say, that's out there to make sure we're, we're creating um, a future generation. I think as um, all of us as corporations, again, have looked to see that there are portions of our workforce that are aging and we need to replace that, have realized that this is, this is not something that gets assigned to an HR department. It's not something that is, um, you know, not the topic of conversation, but rather it needs to be, and it is for us at Exelon, it is part of our, the critical activities we take day to day is how do we develop, how do we develop the next generation of leaders? And again, like I say, that starts long before they enter our doors. Um, it starts with us reaching into under-resourced communities in, in a real way, day in, day out. Thank you. Mari, I'm going to leave you with the final word. I'm wondering, what can we do today to make sure that we have brighter, more inclusive, and fairer leaders tomorrow? Well, thank you for that question and for this conversation this morning. And it is so exciting to see the real synergy and connection across from our programs, the scouting programs that are supporting our youth today, through to what we can do in higher education, through to the corporate sector. And it is going to take this, um, as, as you all were saying earlier, this sort of sustained energy and momentum where we are all working in concert to really be able to make a difference. And um, you know, music to my ears that you see education as the key, because that is indeed um, often long been my philosophy as well and, and why this work is so rewarding. So I'm very proud to say that as part of our commitment to he for she, Stony Brook University has now achieved 50-50 gender parity in our university council, which is our primary leadership, uh, academic leadership for this institution. So really proud that we've achieved 50-50, but obviously we still have more work to do um, in giving opportunities to young leaders and allowing them to really be part of the voice for change at Stony Brook University. Thank you for sharing that. And, and thank you all for your insights today. I know I have learned a lot from you and, and really enjoyed hearing about your work and your ideas. And I hope that our audience has as well. Um, thank you again for being here. I hope that we've given you something to think about. It's been a, a delight moderating this panel and I hope to see you soon. Thank you.